Welcome to the Fighting on Film podcast, the podcast all about classic and obscure war movies, from the Normandy landings to the days of chivalry and swords. If it's been captured on film, we're going to try and cover it. I'm Robbie of RM Military History. I'm Matthew Moss of Historical Firearms and the Armourer's Bench. Hello and welcome back to Operation Delta Force December where we are looking at the series of films that you may or may not have heard of, who knows. Um, And this week we are tackling Operation Delta Force 2 Mayday. Um, It's the one on a ship. And basically it's, it's, we're following a Delta Force team as they take on some terrorists. And it's a classic late 90s, early 2000s action series. And they're all available on YouTube. That's the beauty of this month. Legally. Everyone can, legally. Yeah, exactly, yeah, legally. Everyone can go and see these movies. And at this time of year, me and Matt like to wind down um, the year with some schlock, some action. Um, mm-hmm. If you're were, if you were fans of Dirt, uh, Dirty Dozen December, you'll know exactly the kind of vibe we're going for. Hope you enjoyed last week's chat with Sam. What, how interesting Sam was that? Sam kicked us off perfectly. Oh, I know. He had right? a lot of comments exactly. about how enthusiastic he was. And he, he was a great great guest to chat to amazing Just his enthusiasm for film in general and you know chatting about one that he doesn't talk about too often it was really mm. nice um That's great this one came out in 1998 um and i think what we'll do is uh i'll run through production and then rob's going to handle cast and then we'll we'll chat about the the plot of the film and all that good stuff in yeah. the yeah yeah so as i said film came out in 1998 uh and it was directed by yossi wayne uh, he's best known for films like uh, Lethal Ninja, Cybercop 2, Merchant of Death, uh, US Seals. And he'd later actually gone to direct uh, another of the venerable Operation Delta Force series. Uh, he directed Operation Delta Force 5, the final installment oh, so far. Look anyway. forward to that. Yeah. Um, and of course, Death Train in 2003. Um, as, as Sam actually mentioned the other week, um, the plot for this this film just like the previous one was uh pulled together by one of the actual producers uh, and in this case mm. it was Danny Lerner uh, and he provided the story but he was producer on all five of the films oh great and a lot of the cult movies as well of in recent times he's directly he's actually um produced uh, a number of bigger profile pictures including War Inc Ooh. um uh Expendables 2 and 3 uh, Olympus has fallen, and uh, an interesting film called Killing Season with John Travolta and Robert De Niro, where they're oh, both veterans yeah. of the Bosnian. Matt, Matt has been gunning have to come hard. together. <laughs> so that fucks up. behind the that scenes, looks a weird film. I must get every month or so. Matt, then Matt brings this movie up. So in the new year, we might have to do it because it just sounds incredible. Um, with the with the cast premise is insane. Look it up. Yeah. Um, and then the, the the script was actually pulled together by uh, David Sparling, and he uh, also did the scripts for one, two, three, and four of Operation Delta Force, um, but not five. Uh, he also wrote the uh, Mention of Death and U.S. Seals. So from this, you can kind of see there's a lot of overlap with the guys yeah. that are on, on the on they got the, their mates, the their crew, side of their team. It's yeah. yeah, it's all within that Millennium Films um, new image. Yeah, uh, production company. Kind of like of how Canon used to do it. Is what Sam was well, saying. It, it's the yeah, same deal. Exactly. Sam explained it really well last week, didn't he? Hmm. Uh, cinematography was provided by Peter Belcher, uh, who worked extensively as a camera op and a cinematographer um, throughout his career. Still working today. Uh, he worked as a cinematographer on Merchant of Death, Operation Delta Force um, 2, this one. Um, he did two episodes of CI5, the new CI5 in the oh, late 90s. Yeah, Christ, US Seals again. He was cinematographer on that. He was uh also the cinematographer for uh Operation Delta Force 5, US Seals 2, uh, and Death Train as well. And he was the uh camera up on films including Laser Mission, Point of Impact, Cyber Cop, Danger Zone, um, Operation Delta Force 1. Death Train, and then more recently, films like Lord of War, uh, the oh, series wow. Generation Kill, Dread, Mad Max Fury Road, and The Woman King. So he's kind of, yeah, yeah. He's been camera up on some really interesting movies recently. Um, 
So Operation Delta Force 2 Mayday uh, was filmed in Johannesburg in March, June 1996, released about 18 months later. Yeah. Um, they were clearly banging these out, weren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh... um, you can you can see it in the in the in the crew lists and and the cast. You, you can see yeah. that the it's an annual thing where they're knocking these out and they you know they they bring in a a known group of people back to it each time. Mm. And I as they I had a contract with HBO or something for a set amount of these home premieres, and they're just yeah. working to a deadline. Perhaps I, I can't get to the bottom of it because this. As oh, Matt will tell there's you, there's very, very there's little out there on, on FA these out there on these movies. Yeah, I mean, even if you go on Wikipedia, it has like, it doesn't have individual synopsis yeah. for all the films. It just has a list of the films, and, and so despite that tells you a being lot. Ava- despite being eligible, reason, it isn't li- it isn't listed on the AFI, Rob. I, no, I can't understand that. why. Despite being eligible <laughs> for an AFI catalog, <laughs> archive catalog, it's not on there. It's like the fourth uh, then, Bible when we do American shows. It is, yeah. On like, on like a good <laughs> American, American film, there's always yeah. really great information on the AFI. It's, 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 um, it's slightly better than the BFI in that respect. Um, I think it sadly. is. Yeah. Um, just to round out production side of things, as I mentioned, produced by Millennium Films, and it was distributed by New Image. And you see like three individual title cards at the beginning of the film. Yeah. yeah. For New Image and New Image Productions and New mm. Image like worldwide and. Like, There's a great trailer that me and Matt saw as well, which is a, essentially like a selling trailer to, mm. to sell it to potential buyers. That's, that's yeah, an like interesting distributors thing. Distributors and, and like home yeah, video yeah. stores and stuff. Mm. I'd definitely have a rack of these again. on the shelf. I'd have been knocking these out for ten dollars. Oh yeah, I'd have cleaned absolutely. Up. Hey kids, do you want the steelbook of Operation Delta Force <laughs> Two Mayday? It's what I've always wanted for Christmas, Daddy. Oh my god. Can I have if a you don't buy too, me, Mr. you don't love me. <laughs> it's the, it's the weekend think, film everyone needs. Oh, yeah. I think we can assume as well that it's probably the same kind of budget that Operation Delta Force 1 had. So probably, probably about a mil. Yeah. Mil, 1.5 million, mm. probably. But then, obviously, if you listen to last week, that gets converted into South African currency. So they're playing with a lot more money overseas yeah. than they would have had in the US. So it's it's a clever model. And it's, still, it's a model that's still done today. Oh, um, totally. Yeah. Massively. So I think that brings us into cast. Now, this week we were meant to be joined by Michael McGrady, um, who plays Captain Skip Lang. Unfortunately, he was busy with work, um, but we carry on regardless here at FOF. So um, aforementioned, uh, Michael McGrady, he's been in Ray Donovan, American Crime Story, uh, Seal Team at the TV series. He was Rusty Galloway in L.A. Noir for all you uh, gaming fans out there. An excellent voice role. Um, uh, Then he was Private Floyd in Thin Red Line. Um, if oh. you remember, mm. did he make it on screen? I think he did. Well, it, it's, it's anyone's guess. <laughs> he could have been in the back of his head for that. With that, <laughs> it's edit, a meme you know? now. Totally mean. Him and him and uh, him and Adrian Brody sitting together in the cinema, just leaning in, going, "What the fuck have I done with my role? <laughs> where, where where am I?" <laughs> um, and he was also in, in "What Up" as well. The uh, the movie that came out after Tombstone. Oh, he's in that, was he? He's cool. in that, yeah, yeah. Mm, nice. and then we have uh, Ro- uh, Robert uh, Patieri as Sergeant Mac McKinney. Um, he was in Conan, uh, CSI Miami, Babylon 5. Not many credits to his name. Uh, then we had Todd Jensen back again, but he's playing Master Sergeant Lombardi, um, and he played Hutch in Operation Delta Force 1. Um, not sure why they recast Hutch, <laughs> just didn't keep him as the same character. We'll never know. Um, this is the beauty of these movies. They do they do go a bit he, mad. He's back, with the he comes back again later on. So yeah, <laughs> someone else again. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, he was in Cyborg Cop, one of, one of Sam Furstenberg's movies. Uh, mm-hmm. Tropical Heat, another Sam Furstenberg project. Um, CI Five: The New Professionals, uh, and he of course comes back in Operation Delta Force Five: Random Fire. Um, then we have uh, Spencer Roachfort um, as Hutch. He was in Twenty One Jump Street: Falling Down. Beverly Hills 90210 and Baywatch. Um, you know, these are I really... love that the Hutch character is still in the film, but they re- they just it's so went, bizarre. Fuck it, we'll just change the, the actor. It's fine. Change, yeah. yeah, fuck it. No one's gonna notice. No, <laughs> no, you know, not not until there's a fight on film boys get hold of us. Right. <laughs> 20 years later. But you know, these are proper at the time they were, they were you know, jobbing, uh, you know, that 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 sort of straight to straight to video market is still quite lucrative. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. there's it's not like it was now. You know, you'd sign a streaming deal, but back then you could 
do a lot of these movies in a year and probably make quite a good income on it off it i think yeah um get get some credits on and um, then we have gavin hood as sparks now he would reprise his role um in next week's um operation delta force three playing sparks again um clear target oh my god um, they kept him as the same character Amazing. He did, yeah mad um, but he's since gone on the continuity become... the continuity manager on that one must have been like <laughs> my work here is done yeah he, he had his weetabix in the morning didn't he um, <laughs> but he's gone on to become a director and he's actually directed some quite you know well-received pictures so he Ooh. um did totsy you remember that did the oscar I, rounds a few yeah. years ago yeah um x-men uh origin wolverine no way ender's game and eye in the sky that movie about drones Oh, with Alan Rickman and Helen Mirren. With Alan Rickman, yeah, yeah. Wow. He also has um small roles in in Totsi, I think, and Eye in the Sky, if I remember rightly. But no, what wow. a what an amazing, another glow up there. Wow. Yeah. Wow, mm. that's cool. Yeah, and then we have uh, Dale Die as um as Captain Housley Lang, um, Skip Lang's dad. Obviously, you'll remember Dale Dye from when we chatted to him a few months back. Go and listen to that if show you if you have haven't. not listened to our episode with Dale, go back and listen to it. It's I think it, by I think far it might be the one of my of favorite fighting on film episodes yeah. ever. Absolutely incredible. Like any any war movie fan, any fan of Banner Brothers, any fan of anything like that, our Dale Dye episode is is a treat. Um, so obviously, you know, you'll know Dale from Platoon. He's in Mission Mission Impossible, Under Siege Two, Starship Troopers. He played Colonel Sink in Banner Brothers, and in the Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway video game, he voiced him. Um, but obviously, we know him best as a military advisor. Um, he was a military advisor on Greyhound, the Band of Brothers, Saving Private Ryan, Tropic Thunder, the Pacific, to name but a few. And of course, he was the uh, military advisor on the much anticipated Masters of the Air, which is coming out in January, I think. Um, they just dropped the trailer. Yep, um, 26th. 26th, yeah. You looking forward to mm-hmm. it, Matt? What do you, th- what are you what I are your, am. I am. I, I thought, let's tangent a little bit, but. I, I liked the trailer. I thought it looked good. I thought um, a little bit more excited by it than I was the teaser. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. I'm on the fence still. Hmm. I'm on the fence. I've, I've got this weird thing where TV and streaming have come on massively since yeah. the Pacific and Brand of Brothers came out. I'm not saying this is going to be good. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm worried that if it's not received well, it will just be another streaming show. Like yeah. it, I'm worried about watched, that for it. I watched Matt Bone, our friend Matt Bone's uh, mm. breakdown of the trailer uh, on his YouTube channel, Damcasters, um, and he joined us for for Red Tails this year as well. If you haven't listened to that, check that one out too. Um, and he broke it down and he, he talked a little bit about um, thinking that the CGI didn't look as good as it could have done, mm. and he 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 thinks perhaps it's because it's compressed for YouTube and it could you know, be. And be. Twitter and social media yeah. stuff. So hopefully, because some of that's so it looked good, but some of it, mm. yeah, we could we yeah. could be seeing trailer renders for all we know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and they there's some pressure. interesting edits with that trailer too, like cutting yeah. the ski guy in the cockpit. Yeah, as, it feels as, like um, it's going to be a lot more wide covering yeah. than maybe yeah. the book did. We, we might get yeah. a, an, an Italy episode, and I think there's there's a shot of them in the desert as well. So yeah, yeah. So it, 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 I think they're going to try and be a little bit expansive yeah. with it, as you say, and I think it might be Will, will Butler sound like Elvis, though? That's the big... No, I don't think he will, because he talks in the trailer, and it's fine. He doesn't do the... It doesn't do the We're going to get up in the sky, this old B-17. Give it some give it some willy, boys. It's like he's in the room. Oh, baby. <laughs> Open them Bombay doors, baby. <laughs> Imagine if he had done it like that. That would have been great. That would have been amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that looks like it's oh. going to be our, our February. Our February is going to be blocked out be, with, yeah. with a bit of... Um... working damn hard behind the scenes to try and get us a screener, but Apple are hard to contact. Um, so, you know, we might have to wait like everyone else. Yeah. Um, but you never know. You never know. Keep your, keep your ears peeled. If anyone from <laughs> Apple is listening yeah. right now. Please. <laughs> Production companies have trusted us with properties before. Uh, they have. And we're very them. good boys. So getting back to the cast, um, finishing us off this week, because to be fair, it's one of those movies where there's a lot of people in it, but there aren't really a lot of roles, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is just the key players, people that you're, you're with all the time. So we have J. Kenneth Campbell playing Flint Lukash. He's your big bad. 
the, he's the terrorist of the of the week, if you will. Um, he is. He's had some interesting credits. He was in Bar Bar Black Sheep, the uh, the American flying um, series, World War Two uh, flying series. So it's a nice little um, cannon off uh, Masters of the Air. There, that was also called Flying Misfits in some uh, some regions. Uh, he was also in War and Rem- Remembrance, that American TV. Um, oh yeah, epic from the, back in the day. Yeah, he's they did a Mars few attacks. of those. Didn't they? Yeah, Mars Attacks. I know Matt likes that one. Yeah, I, cool. I, the movie scared the shit out of me when I was little. I've got to admit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sharks in it no it's not but the, the alien heads were scary for some yeah, reason yeah. and then when, yeah. the, when the woman gets on that dog and like the oh the yeah dog that's head, a bit weird yeah that was a bit yeah. creepy yeah and i didn't yeah. understand Tom jones's was... greatest greatest work <laughs> yeah i didn't understand when i was young that it's a spoof of 50s cinema yeah. so like it's one of those films you go reappraise when you're old and you're like oh no i get it now i get it yeah. why it's like it is yeah 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 um and he was uh kenneth campbell was also in uh Walker, Texas Ranger, and uh, Collateral Damage with um, oh, Arnie. Yeah. So a quite a good cast again. You know, th- these movies aren't, you know, they're not going to have the big the big hitters, really. They're, you know, they're not those kind of movies. I think the budget would be absolutely tanked if you got anyone in who was a huge name. Um, yeah. But this one's big name, I guess, is Dale Dye. Um, he's the Hal Holbrook of yeah. this one, I guess. He is, yeah. And he's darn good in it. He's Dale Dye. You know, he's he, he's doing he's, Dale. He, he's he's bringing classic Dale energy to it, and I love it. Oh, yeah, I'm here for yeah. it. More on Dale later. Um, so this week uh, we don't have any one word reviews because we were um, we didn't know that Mike wouldn't be joining us until very close to release. Um, so we, we didn't put out a one word review because we were we were sorting things out behind the scenes. Anyway, I found a retro review from TV Guide from April '98, and it's not kind. It follows as this. Despite a procession of violent set twos, Operation Delta Force 2 emerges as a sluggish action pick with only the Special Forces team concept in common with its predecessor. Bone crusher flicks like this one need a star figure in firm command, but top build Michael Grady makes no more of an impression than several of his supporting players. Mm. Aside from the scripting detritus, this action packed time waster sprawls over so many international settings that the viewers will be unsure of where they are at any given time. <laughs> Although glint-eyed J. Kenneth Campbell enjoys quoting Poe while promising nuclear catastrophes, his co-stars appear to have mal- maltriculated at the I'll just collect my Praytech branch of the actor's studio. They lack the wherewithal to elevate this above the level of a standard adventure tale. TV Guide with waking up on the wrong side of the bed. Who pissed in their chips? Jesus. Like a, <laughs> that's a scather, isn't it? It is. That's Yeah, I it, it is fair to say that a lot of the supporting cast don't have a lot to do. No, they don't, but that's not their in fault terms though, of is the it? Script. Yeah. <laughs> you know. There there is issues with this one. And the that it, it tries to do what last week didn't. Well, like so if you if you've listened to the Op- Operation Delta Force one episode or you've li- or you've watched it in preparation for this one, or you've seen it already. Um, Sam says it needed to be 50% action, 50% story, where Operation Delta Force 1 is, he reckoned it's probably like 70%, 60% action. And there's not as yeah. much story. But it works. This, Yeah, it works. But this one does that 50-50. But it doesn't, it doesn't do either one well, in a way. Yeah, there's something lacking with this one. And I'm sure mm. that's final thoughts territory, but... It is, you know. yeah. But anyway, I think maybe we should get onto the Ali Tally, because boy howdy. Do we have an Ali Tally this week? It's time for Ali Tally on Fighting on Film. Mike's goatee. <laughs> it's very 90s, isn't it? It's very, <laughs> I think my dad had one like that too <laughs> in, the, in the late 90s. I think it was the thing, wasn't it? Love it. I really liked the upside down M16 minigun from the opening sequence. That was fun. Me and Matt watched this pretty much at the same time. Um, and on the WhatsApp, we were messaging furiously. And I was like, is that a Breda inside that? Like, what's, what is that? And then we finally worked out it's a gun turned upside down with like a minigun built around it. Yeah. So they, with like it, a it, computer it like joystick a, on the top. It's it had, a, it had, a, it had um, a beta mag on top. That's the, and then um, like a receiver body faked over it with a barrel on the top yeah and then that it had a single barrel that was firing and then it had an independent set of barrels that were like macro rotating spinning yeah yeah 
And I, 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 I like prop that. work. I've got to admit. Yeah, like, it, it, that's it, exactly. Good but the, but the weird thing isn't really the minigun. The weird thing is that it's in a random entrenched position at an Iraqi army command the, post. Yeah, the Iraqi National Guard, uh, you know, that's it. Republican Guard, rather. Republican are, are Guard, well yeah. known, Well known for their uh, ground use of miniguns. Mini it's great like because this is this is after obviously operation desert storm so i assume that's mm-hmm. why they chose the iraqis to be the the, the sort of kicking off yeah. that bit rescuing yeah. they're rescuing pilots down pilots weren't they yeah. um so I, I assumed it was a desert storm thing but you don't learn anything about why they're there they're just there either that or they kind of like predicted operation iraqi freedom by about six years yeah maybe yeah although we're never quite sure when these movies are set are we like no, we assume true. they're set now, but they could be set mm. in the early in the late eighties. We, it's hard to work it out. Um, but I, I do think I do think it's probably set in 90, 96, 97. Yeah, um, I always get the feeling with these these films that you'd be assuming too much if you thought like. Yeah, we're we're, we're giving it a lot of flowers. Yeah, here, really, aren't we? I, I know, I know <laughs> that when 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 the high it's six late it's six week sorry six months later. Because well, it. it says it on screen, so the six months between the Iraqi mission, oh my god, and yeah. the and the the hijacking of the the submarine and cruise ship, um, that's nuts that to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's this film is great. This about. film is it's, crazy. It's all over like, last shot. week. We were talking about how it had, that film had everything. Yes, um, but this film, it feels like they watched a, a mix between Under Siege, Hunt for Red October, and. Yeah. Speed two, and we're like, yes, yeah, yeah, that's it. That, this I'll one have has, some of that. This one leans into the mockbuster of genre a, a bit more, um, Does than, a bit. than than Delta Force One did. I mean, for me, I had that minigun picked out there, but but the, the custom M4 carbines X1 XM 177s are back, yeah. Um, everyone seems to have like a, a custom that one with the foregrip, the, like the Thompson that's style it. foregrip. Yeah, that's the, really cool. It's it's the same armor as in, the, in a lot of the same guns yes, from the first it film, must obviously. Be. Yeah, yeah, it must be. Um, interestingly though, no military advisor is in the credits for this one. No, so I wonder if I Dale assume... had anything to do with it. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe he might have. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. It's not listed on the Warriors. Record. It's not listed on the Warriors Inc. Oh, um, site. So interesting. Hmm. Interesting. There's some vectors mocked up to look like AK-74s, which is quite yeah. nice. That's a, a South African. Um, are they based on the Galil, the vector? Yeah, Galil AK derivative kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, and you can always tell if it's a mock-up, um, Robbie's vector mock-up corner, um, where you can see the, um, the the receiver of the gun is angled and it goes into where the handguard could be, should be. Because the AK mm-hmm. handguards are quite fat, the, the AK handguard hangs over that little that angle so it looks a bit uh, weird. It's quite blocky uh, and jagged mm, to look mm. at. You can always tell. And they also um, have a straight um, front sight post as well. That's it, yeah. They, the, they're decent the mock-ups, though. Someone's found AK-74, like, muzzle brakes, and they've put them on, which is yeah. which is quite cool. Um, they do look nice. The, the bad guy's running around with, like, a galil for the folded magazine mm. on it, firing it off in... In a control room of a nuclear sub, <laughs> some things you things yeah. you shouldn't do. <laughs> things you should not do in the pressure vessel yeah. of a nuclear submarine. Yeah, by he a just guns full chaps down full bore seven point six two rounds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some other um, other baddies running around with micro Uzis, which are cool. You don't usually see those. Yeah, very nineties. Yeah. The, the the baddie on the ship, like the the sub sub baddie. The oh, leads, yeah. the, the, oh, the, 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 the Johnny Cash looking bloke. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the South African Johnny Cash guy. He's got like um like a chromed revolver, like a yeah, that's cool. Like a seven inch barrel on it. They've got good baddie guns. Yeah. They, yeah. Some of them have there's a bit where they take over the dining room of the ship they want to <laughs> extract or die from, and, and the waiters all go like get their guns out, and they've all got it's very like sort of action TV show style where they all get them out in like slow-mo and one guy's got like a Thompson, another guy's got a Walther MP. So it's, yeah. it really must be the same armour because these are really are the same weapons. Um, but in terms of, in terms of uh, other Ali Tally bits, um, there's a really cool use of a flare gun um, trying to be this weird underwater pistol. Oh yeah. It's like a standing in for an HKP8 where the, the yeah. kind of bit. Yeah. That's quite cool. And there's an um, underwater sea battle, which I do like. There is. There's That's so weird. Cockpit, a little bit Bond-esque. Yeah. Um, 
There's a grease gun. There's there the is, water yeah. MP comes back yeah. in the henchman arsenal. Um, there's a sequence yeah, where one of those there's... extras is meant to be firing a micro Uzi and the sound oh. is playing, but he's just juddering the gun around and yeah, nothing's classic. happening. So he must the... they must have just said, No, you're not weapons train. You can just hold yeah. it. <laughs> we haven't got we haven't got any more ammo for you, mate. Sorry. Um no, no. There's lots of nice blank firing going on. There's some good bits where Mike and the boys are like blatting and the and you can see the spent casings falling out yeah, and nice. like, yeah. you checked yeah. in and stuff. That's quite good. Um one of the US admirals is wearing like Russian epaulets. <laughs> yeah. The Pentagon. It's funny. Yeah. I'm like, what what? <laughs> um Oh, they've got the fucking world's fattest 90s telly. You know, Ooh, the ones you'd have to take the yeah. fucking wall out to get them in. Absolute like them Gucci boys. TV for 1996. Yeah. Big, big, like, like 52 Ooh, Can you imagine square. setting that bad boy up with a PS1 and a light gun? Oh. Oh. oh, oh, point blank on that. Oh, Yeah, time crisis. Did you, did you ever used to hold it, hold the gun in one hand and get your, your trigger finger and, like, jag it Ooh, yeah, like, of course. back and forth yeah, to get the... Like, yeah. My, fa- my favourite light gun game is actually the Die Hard trilogy game. Oh really? Oh okay. And it's, so the I love Time Crisis, but the Die Hard trilogy game yeah. there was a really gash, like taxi driving sequence from Dial Three. Yeah, which was remember. a terrible driving level. Then there was a top down, so almost isometric one where you're in yeah. the Akatomi Tower, and you have to like clear various levels. And that's a fun fun level. But then the best one was the light gun level or the light gun part of the game, where it's Die Hard Two. Whether yeah. in the airport, and you That's have to fun, clear man. the airport with the with the light gun, and it's oh, it's so it's such a good game. Nineties gaming just hits different, doesn't it? And it, it? Yeah, and you know, I'm sure once the hostage situation was was sorted out and everything, the the admirals and the and the generals at the Pentagon pulled out the, the PS1 and plugged in, Def did, yeah, and got the light gun out and had a had a, had a good yeah. blat on the on the big CRT, yeah, defo. I got NAS, got the new NASCAR racing game, guys. Come on, got F one. <laughs> whether 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 engine sounds like bees. <laughs> you think? I've got, I've got, that, I've, got <laughs> I've got the I've got the new the new Porsche Need for Speed game, boys. Let's let's whack this on. I rented Crash Bandicoot. It's the last copy <laughs> they had. Come on, Ogre Booger. If Have you boys ever played Overboard? It's a pirate game. <laughs> <laughs> have you lads played SSX Tricky? Come on. <laughs> amazing no but it, it was amazing to see that and the, and the quality the quality of picture they got off that 90s telly i was amazed oh my god the the, the proto death. zoom the proto yeah. zoom chats they have when and, and <laughs> really mike's great. character is like stood in in like manila or wherever the hell it's supposed to be on like on like in front of a podium which has got an embedded crt tv yeah and then a big camera at the top and he's like chatting away and it is literally a zoom meeting it's so clever. I love it's it. Insane. I love stuff like that. I love I love when movies predate what we have. Like I know that video calls have been a thing, but like I love yeah. it when movies do that. And they made it look so easy as well. Oh, it's, it's it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um we have we have more trouble setting up Zoom than he did. <laughs> I think we do, yeah. Um in terms of vehicles, there's a there's uh, BMPs this week. Uh, the MI8 helicopters are back, probably the mm-hmm. same ones, I assume. Um there's uh, a speedboat sequence, which is a little is. bit the world is not enough, or, or um, is it world is not enough with the, the boat chase at the start? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, was it die another day? I can't remember. Um, is it tomorrow never dies? Tomorrow no, never well, dies. It's, it's, no, it's, it, yeah, no, I think it is world is not enough. The world's one in London. Enough. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's tomorrow never. That's world is not enough. Okay, cool. Yeah, we've got great up. Got to get God, our bonds we've, right. The we've spy, had some tangents this week. Holy, the spy oh. hards lads will have us have our skin if, if we don't get mm-hmm. it right. That is um, true. But no, they're cool. They're like little black, sort of like you know, speedboaty type things. Yeah. Um. There's a there's I think there's a Hercules in there. Bring them in. Yeah. Is it Hercules. Yeah. Can't remember. No no buggies this week. No buggies um, this week. No. No trains. Couldn't, couldn't quite fit them in, but they're submarines. But there's oh submarine. boy, there be subs. And, and there is one what, line. Like, what 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 a sub it is as well. What a choice. <laughs> it's the Kursk, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The Kursk submarine. That Kursk. Yeah. You know, the one the one that took a nap at the bottom of the ocean for a bit. Um <laughs> I might cut that out. You know, the, the one that sunk. Had, do you know there's 20, 20 ships in that class and they could have picked any of them? Yeah, exactly. They picked and that one. They picked <laughs> that, the Kursk four years before it sank in two thousand. 
and there's a line that hates has aged like absolute milk um <laughs> age like milk where where they they're trying to take the sub the big bad turns to one of his you know henchmen and he, and he goes this way the coast will be remembered forever and i couldn't quite believe it it's one of the all-time great movie lines that were just age like milk. I couldn't quite believe it. Wow, I know. It is incredible. I believe it. I it is incredible. It. No. Oh dear. Um. Anyway, moving swiftly on to favourite scenes. Hello, I'm Al Murray, and you're listening to Fighting on Film, the world's number one war film podcast. Any scene with Dalen? Is that it for you this week? Yeah, kind of. But yeah, but any scene with Dale, I just wanted him to be a bit more action. I wanted him to. What I what yeah. I said to Rob was when when it when we were watching it, I was like, "Oh God, I hope he diehards this," and it's just yeah. Dale holding yeah. out on the cruise ship, waiting they for. They set waiting that for up, but then they don't do it. Mike and the boys to come and save him. Yeah, it's and annoying. He's there, like in that. the ducts with a captured yeah. vector, oh, just dropping the one line. Would have been amazing. That would have been, been amazing. Great. Yeah. Um, no, he's Dale is great in it. That Dale brings a level of seriousness to the movie that I think it really needed. So yeah, it gives it a bit of gravitas, doesn't it? Yeah, because the plot. It's hard to talk about final favorite scenes without going to final thoughts to, to explain it. But the, the 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 terrorist motivation is very convoluted. So I've watched it twice now, and you're never quite sure why they're doing what they're doing. He's just holding everyone to ransom. He's just holding For everyone to ransom. Of dollars, I think. Yeah, like classic classic sort of trope stuff but he wants to nuke not only los angeles but moscow and st petersburg at the same time why not why not i know right go for it go for a hat trick if you can yeah. um it's 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 just a bit convoluted you're never quite sure what why or who he is like why is this who is this guy sort of thing it's, it's just like a big bad i guess um no but I, I did you're right i did want dale to at least gun someone down once like it would have been nice it, it to see does it. eventually get a little bit of uh a little bit of that going on where he yeah. picks up one of the AKs, but he never he, No, he doesn't never has that moment. Quite. No like they robbed they robbed our boy. It's a shame. We were so yeah. looking forward to that, weren't we? The minute the minute I mentioned Dale was in this one, me and Matt were like, Ooh, we're gonna get some Dale action. He you don't mm. quite get it. But no, he does he does add some gravitas to this one. You're, Honestly, you're very, I, I very think, true. I think Dale could have easily been the the lead in this and carried this film. Could have, yeah, yeah. Really? Actually, because yeah. he's great. He, he is. He is a good actor, and he he's in it a lot though. He, he is, and he he pulls it off really well in in the film because he has a convoluted character where he's. So this is a bit of the Operation Delta Force law coming in, where yeah, you know Skip Lang's brother Peter joined the special forces and also and was killed on a mish um at some point and um daddy lang um dale <laughs> daddy dale daddy lang daddy lang and uh, and and daddy lang is is retired from the navy he was one of the us navy's premier nuclear submarine captains yeah. um and he's retired to to captain a cruise ship, um, the North Star, the North Star, uh, because he uh, he can't face you know, being in the military anymore now that one of his sons has died, and oh. um and and sadly Skip and Daddy Lang don't talk. No, they don't. Um, and there's a very brief scene where Mike has to do some work, uh, acting on board the the the, the Hercules, which is yes. taking. Yes. Taking them and he explains the backstory of his family very briefly. Like yeah. they are given absolutely nothing to do in this film. Like, <laughs> I know, I know. So few their, scenes their where their they're job... talking or g- delivering yeah. context or a monologue. It's so it's annoying. Just like... like their job is literally to turn up and shoot everyone. Like it's <laughs> it's they don't do anything else. It's really annoying. Like you get it, that's right. That Hercules sequence almost gives them some backstory. Almost gives them some character development, but then it doesn't quite do it. Like it's. It's a bit annoying. And then there's one section where one guy's wearing like a 173rd airborne vest. And you're like, oh, cool. Is he going to mention that he was a paratrooper? You know, maybe mm. we're going to get a bit of... Because as I assume at one point, all these movies were meant to have the same team going through. Yeah. So I probably. assume there's 
things they plan if to they have. thought that far ahead yeah yeah but you'd, you'd think you would have the same people like it's it, it, it feels like it because it's skip lang's coming over again so it yeah. feels like it's you could like have just meant had to be a different delta force team every time you could have yeah yeah because it mm. feels like these are the only this is the only delta force team <laughs> that are around because there's a section where they go they're, they're the only team that are operating in the area and i was like Delta team's not just five bikes. Like there's a whole heap yeah. of them, and like it's like yeah. the SAS. You know, there's more than just one of them. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a bit. It's a bit weird. Um, what was your, What was your favorite scene? My favorite scene, m- much like last week, um, it's the opening set piece because I love Ooh, how yeah. balls to the wall again. Like it's just unashamedly an action set piece where pasting the entire Iraqi army. Yeah, exactly. No, like, taking on the entire Republican Guard brigade. Um, you know, finishing them off like proper finishing off these lads, um, rescuing the, the 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 down there airmen. But that could have been a movie in itself. Like that, that would have been a very yeah. missing in action esque R- Rambo two esque plot line. Mm. Anyway, that would have been, Hot shots been too. quite strong. Yeah, Hot Shots two. Yeah, again. Um, <laughs> but it's it, it's just fun. Like you know, there's explosions. Yeah, they all like G threes and stuff. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've got vectors. It's quite nice. You know, it's. It, it, it was a well done set piece. I liked I liked the trench clearing. I liked the single shot in the fifty caliber, yeah. the minigun, blowing up God knows yeah. what with M two hundred three. That, uh, that BTR yeah. that looked wrong with its yeah, weird, with a big like, fat turret cap turret on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's good. It's just there's just a, a lot of a lot going on. There's a lot of money thrown at that section yeah, Mike's, again. Mike's two hundred three was OP. Like oh, it was blowing everything OP. up. It's like the pistol from Halo 2. It's just it's killing everything. Um but I also really it's like the enjoyed... M sixteen from that that level on in on their Die Hard trilogy when you get the light gun. <laughs> what a what a re- what a callback. <laughs> <laughs> what a callback. Um but I also really enjoyed because I wasn't expecting it and it and it blew my socks off when I saw it, was the underwater fight sequence with the oh yeah james bond red suited soviet scuba divers yeah. who who comes to so it's absurd because in this part of the movie and uh, where the scuba diving happens they're trying to break into this this is crazy it's like a bit like this film's a bit like um shout of the devil where there's just so much going so the, on the nuclear submarine goes and stops a, a, a russian naval base which is yeah i don't know why they stop but yeah. they do where does the where's the cruise ship go when they're stopping there you never find out. I I, I never I assume they just, until just they now. Div- diverted it away. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, they stopped there to like load some missiles. But why didn't they have missiles on board in the first place? Oh, they shot no. They shot them all off, didn't they? When they were fighting the the Russian sub that came to get them. Surely, yeah. But no, they load missiles into like the vertical launch tubes. Oh right, on oh, the okay. torpedo tubes. M- maybe think. the Kursk didn't have any vertical rockets that day. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess not. Like we're, yeah. we're fresh out of ICBMs. We best go and get some. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah, weird. Those things um, we've never shot in anger. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then they're, they're so they go to, to that naval base and they have yeah. to like follow them there. Carry on. Yeah. So they're trying to infiltrate in their speedboats, and they find a, a mine wall, like mines on chicken wire. You know. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, a wall of mines or whatever they call. It. What's it called? Mine net. I don't know. I'm yeah, wrong. it's a net. It's like a like a, like an anti-submarine net or an anti-submarine defense. Sort of That's thing. it. Yeah. Basically, it's it's a metal net fence thing that they've put, and then they've yeah. attached little boxes to it to make it look like it's got <laughs> mines That's on it. it. That's it. So <laughs> Matt quite funnily said to me when we were watching it, they could just they could just float over these. <laughs> like it's not gonna it's not gonna stop anyone. Um. But anyway, so they send they send the uh, the 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 Delta Force guys in to go and um to, to go and disable them. And when they're doing it, these these um out of the mist come these Soviet scuba divers in their red suits, and they have like a bit of a punch up underwater. Uh, they must have <laughs> they must have knocked the um sensors on on the on the anti submarine net. Quite possibly, you know? yeah, yeah. The it reminds the me of the of the underwater fight from um Top Secret. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, had that, it had that vibe. Yeah, it, like it tries to do a lot, and I I appreciate them in two different colours of uh, of, of yeah. wetsuit, so you can differentiate. Definitely, very Bond, definitely. very Bond movie. Yeah, with lemon piping to quite Alan Partridge. <laughs> <laughs> like it just it's just madcap, and I I just appreciate everything this movie's trying to do. It might not necessarily work all of the time. Yeah, um, but it is trying. Um, and there's just actually 
thinking about my favorite scene is when the the cruise ship is first hijacked and they're all in like the the cruise ship's restaurant with oh yes uh, with 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 uh with captain lang's wife and daughter um having a having a nice lunch he's not there he's on the bridge he's working dale's busy yeah. and yeah. um it's got no time for that rubbish no no he, he was going to meet them there but he had to do some uh, errands before he before he yeah yeah, it's so he so he could be on the bridge to say Mayday Mayday. I've got to read the, the script the for Saving Private Ryan. The new, new project yeah. comes through. I got notes to make. Um, yeah. So essentially, like practice they, my Brecon point. They um, I didn't even I didn't even twig it at first because I'm there watching, just enjoying the sequence and, and the mise on scene of the film and the, the riveting dialogue they're having. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that, that, that was a low blow. <laughs> and um, I didn't even notice that all of the, you know, the uh, the waiters and the bus boys look sus. Um, yeah, if you go, if you watch that scene again, they do look really suspect, don't they? Yeah. And they my favorite my favorite part of that entire scene is when you know there's there's a little um, four piece uh, band like a like a quartet, yeah. a string quartet playing. It's very uh, in the corner. And um, there's there's a point where the it pans to them and the music starts to skip, and it pans to a CD player, like a tiny yeah. little like it's CD great. hi-fi that you would have gotten from like uh, just Rumblelows, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> Trying to keep got, the nineties theme going. Comic. You would have got you would have got from Dixon's, um, yeah. banging on Olsen. Yeah. Right. Oh, pricey. Um, oh, right, right. So it starts to skip and it pans to it and all and the audience, like not the audience, the, the restaurant goers kind of like they're confused and then laugh. And you're like, yeah. why are you laughing? <laughs> like the band's fake. <laughs> My violin's skipping. <laughs> <laughs> and then they all just pull weapons and blast. Yeah, they, they don't fuck about, do they? Yeah. No. And then there's a great scene where an, where an old boy tries to attack the oh, yeah. attack them with yeah. a butter knife, which was just hilarious. Yeah. He was apparently do... in a lot of those movies. He's like, oh right. From I'd look on his IMDb page, and he's in like a lot of those cult movies that uh, that Yossi and Sam did, and so stuff like a little like, little trope, little cliche there. Yeah, little, little sort of... I think his name was Hiram. Um, Director Stamp, film, wasn't it? perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's uh, nice. It, 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 it's it's an interesting little little bit because he he's like a Holocaust survivor, and he's got yeah. his, they they kind of pan yeah. across his. Um, number tattoo on his That's wrist it. and mm. he picks up like a bread knife and he's like repeating never him. again never again I wanted, he walks yeah. towards him and then they, they light him up and it's like i know oh, i wanted him to get a stab cool. in at least i was like come on let him let him go down in a blaze of glory right that that sequence for me just felt like the start of like a magnum pi or a, or an equalizer like it Ooh, felt yeah. very tv yeah definitely, like, definitely. But, you know like classic bottle episode where they just want to keep mm. the action in like one room it, it yeah, felt like yeah I wish they'd ran with that a bit more. So then you you might have had like the hostage stuff at the top, and then you've got the submarine stuff at the bottom. If they'd have ran with that a bit more. Yeah, you, you get a couple of more scenes with um with the wife and daughter. Yeah. Chatting. But it's there's like 30 seconds max of that. Yeah. And then yeah. they they there's the greatest CGI uh helicopter assault I've ever oh, seen. Oh yeah. Green Where screen, the helicopter, green green screen, yeah. Blue screen, so they come in and screen. it green screens them over like some footage of the the ship. Let's, yeah, let's pause here and just salute the number of establishing shots external oh of the cruise ship. Definitely Every, padding out the hour forty seven. Like, you you've cut to like a, a little scene on the on the submarine, and then they cut to like a little scene back on the cruise ship yeah. but there has to be an establishing shot we don't oh, yeah, you have to know if, where you are if we cut to the if we cut to that restaurant we'll never know that it's on the ship where are they we'd never know 10 seconds where are they yeah yeah we'd never know that the bridge of the ship looks like that if we didn't see an external shot of I, the of the i assume it paid, costs a lot of money paid, to rent. what they've done is they've paid yeah. for a helicopter yeah. to do a load of of like like long shots and externals of the of the cruise ship and they're like We've got we've got at least eight minutes of these. We need to get I as wonder... many of them in so we can justify it in the budget as possible. <laughs> I couldn't look it up, but I wonder if that cruise line gave them the ship for nothing. And like, well, if you use loads of shots of the ship for promo, Maybe. then you can have it. Like you can have it use it. Dale's they're like, 
Sunset Cruises are a great <laughs> employer. I've always enjoyed being a member of the crew. We never More have water. issues with terrorists <laughs> in reality. What a way to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely that, isn't it? <laughs> Very competitive rates. It's, oh no, it's, terrorists! <laughs> it's like the um, the Alan Partridge Yuletide special where he's got a sponsorship deal with Rover. Oh yeah, well that <laughs> drinks company he keeps mentioning Sprunk, whatever it was called. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's a little bit like that. But I think I think we we're, we're getting into final thoughts now. Um, As always, for, for me, like I mentioned it earlier, like. The movie's fun. These movies are fun. That's why we picked to do them. Mm. Um, and it's still quite enjoyable. But I think if I'm putting my critical hat on, the, the first one's enjoyable in, in, in a way that you can you can literally just sit there, absorb it, and you don't have to do too much thinking. I found myself like just sort of wandering to my phone in the second half, ch- checking Twitter and things, because I was like, oh, mm. nothing's happening that's of any importance. Um, I feel like the second oh, half... Oh, the set piece. Yeah, another set piece. It fell a bit flat for me. Um, and they steal us, as, as you've mentioned, they steal us of that day or die, like having an action moment, which I didn't yeah. like. Um, and then just because the, the terrorist plot is so convoluted and there's so mm. much like chopping to, to one location and he, he to another. he doesn't bring it, does he? No, it, he's, he's doing like this weird Shakespearean quote in poetry he's and not, stuff. And he's like, not terrible in the role. No, no, no. Doesn't... He comes across as menacing. Bully. And then he falls from a catwalk. <laughs> I knew you were going to mention he falls, this. He falls from a catwalk, face Cliche. plants into a deck. <laughs> yeah. And then 10 minutes later, he gets up again. Yeah. And there's a sequence where I'm like, ooh, because Dale has this line where he goes, we need to defend this console. That's it. And then nothing happens about the console. I'm like, oh, no. I thought we were going to have like a little shootout and Dale was going to like blat and stuff, but no. Yeah. Like get a father and son moment. Yeah, the terrorists like together, them, like both of them, like mag dumping into into the terrorists. Yeah, yeah. Give me another mag, Skip. You know that would have been good. Dale slamming another another mag into his back. <laughs> I love you, Dad. <laughs> like racking another <laughs> magazine here in sixteen. Some fathers teach us son to play catch, but I taught my son how to use the M sixteen American battle rifle. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it would have been a great line, uh, but no, it it does it does just fall a little bit flat. This one, like it. It had promise, but by the end, I was like, "Can we the just fact, the terrorist and wrap it up now, please?" Right. The the, the fact that a lot of the scenes are, are set in the control room of the Kursk. What a sense! What a sense! I never God. thought I'd say. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> they they did that classic thing where they spent not enough on the yep. on the set, and it just looks a bit naff. Yeah, it's too it roomy. That's the thing it's that too... these films always get wrong. Yeah, it's too roomy. Yeah. Yeah, it's like um, Battle Battle of the River Plate, where all the battleships are like someone's front room. Mm. <laughs> They're just huge, and it just has the same energy as that. Where I'm like, oh, clearly not in a ship, but obviously we're not, you know, we're not rivet countering that. Like it, it looked okay. Yeah, but yeah. I, I get where you're coming from. It, it's just, it. I don't know. I'm gonna say it, and it's gonna sound weird. It's too unbelievable. Like I want to have a little bit of believability <laughs> in my terrorist actions. Like last week threatening to to sort of spread the ebola virus around is plausible mm. enough the film ends where they all the where the, where the <laughs> it's so stupid the, the film ends where the the soviet captain of the not the soviet the russian oh, captain yeah. i should say yeah. of, of the submarine is is freed um and <laughs> him and dale have this little sequence where they outwit her, um another russian submarine that's um, done quite well which is quite nice that's a good little sequence um and dale's Given all the all the terminology and it's like oh nice yeah um put he brings out like a a, a tray of vodka shots <laughs> yeah <laughs> just does a, a shot a drink a bottle of stolchkill or stolchkill whatever it's Stolly. called yeah Stolly, yeah, yeah. oh great. god yeah, yeah. I mean the Dale film still delivers that action it's got Dale yeah. die yeah it's it's not terrible I've seen far but worse films yeah. We've seen we've seen some. I wouldn't watch some... it again, but I've seen. No, I never visit. I never visit it again. I don't think it's a very one and done movie. Um, but you know, Operation Delta Force doesn't stop. Um, we keep going. Next week we're back with Operation Delta Force Three Clear Target. Um, so uh, we hope you'll join us again for that one. If you if you haven't, I'm if sure they will. If you're not, I'm sure, I'm sure I can't wait for that one. 
everyone's gagging. I wonder what the fourth boys think of the third one. See, right. Move franchise fatigue mm. didn't seep in this early to, to Dirty Dozen December. No, it didn't actually. But it's coming in early with Operation Del Force. Interesting, I, isn't it? If if three is on the same level as as two, yeah, yeah, we'll be okay. We'll, we'll, but if we'll there's a right. clear trajectory of of it dropping off, we've got a long way to go to get to five. Oh, we have. Oh We're god, feel yeah. It. <laughs> Anyway, Christmas, Christmas stick with us to find out enough. how long we last with this. I think we'll get all the way through to all five. Oh, we but, will. We're um, constant professional Because Rob, Rob will hold me at gunpoint if we don't. Um, get that movie on, Matt. <laughs> get it on. <laughs> Your contract. At obliged. least this film had a nice MP5 SD sequence where he cleared a trench with it. Yeah, exactly. That was really nice. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, do join us again next week for Operation Dirt Force 3. Um, share share the movie around. You know we're having a bit bit of fun this December. Um, you can catch up on the show at fightingonfilm.com. We're just hit 160 episodes, so there's plenty of, in that back catalogue for you to enjoy. And do go and listen to the Del Dai episode if you haven't yet. That is a real Christmas cracker. We don't talk about this film for some reason, but it's no. a great episode. <laughs> we admitted this one um, mainly because we didn't know he was in it. Um, anyway, I honestly didn't know these films existed until you suggested this. <laughs> But the the reason is I it's all it on Pound. it's all on Rob everybody it's all you can on Rob. get you can get the all four of them for CEX from a pound for a pound so wow. you know but then you won't have five I know it's you annoying isn't it You're, I know that my I couldn't I couldn't do that I couldn't have I couldn't have four of them and know that there's another and out there they don't even it's have not like, they don't even have like um uh this car it's just it just says operation Delta force one operation Delta force two it's like the cheapest like conversioning of a, of a movie to dvd i've ever seen okay so by the end by the end of this month we'll we will be launching the operation delta force steelbook campaign demanding that all Please. five remastered films are released on steelbook we need to get one of them companies crisp that blu-ray crisp <laughs> right. blu-ray releases Featuring featuring exclusive interview with Sam Furstenberger for the first one. Do it. Like I mean, if if Amazing. Millennium Films or whoever's like putting them out on, on YouTube yeah. wants wants us to do this, I, I will interview we will we will give you our interview with Sam and we will interview Dale Dye. We will get Mike on. We'll we will get so we will, many people. We will we will do the special features. Yeah. For the for that the Operation will, Delta Force Steelbook. That cruise ship will never look better. In, in crispy 4K, crisp, crisp North Star, all those all those Extel cutaway like pan shots of the, the ship at sea, <laughs> be worth it just for that. Amazing, that would be amazing. Anyway, if you listen this far, <laughs> thanks very much for listening. Do come again. Do join us next week for the next instalment of Operation Delta Force December, and of course, Merry Christmas from us all at Fighting on Film. Until next week, folks. Bye bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. <laughs>